message would you have to people your age, which are young people, um, and even the age you died at, 18, so 18 to 25 or whatever, or we can go older if you want, but that's pretty young. Um, what message would you have looking from where you are now that, what would you tell Griffin if you were still here living your life? Like, you know, your parents go through a divorce and you're facing life and what do you tell yourself? He said, that's an interesting and fucked up question. Yeah. You know, only general advice he says, I think that has its place. You know, that's like the hand that holds you during tough times. And then when you come out of it, you can't find out who it was, you know, who right. was there. Right. And he says, so I do think there's a great purpose for general advice. He says, I'd really hope that people will take what I'm about to say and dive a little bit deeper with it and put their own circumstances into the equation so that it, it it hits home it hits it home for them mm -hmm. i think that's how you say it yep um but he said maybe this goes outside of 18 18 to 25 but you know these are the years where change is normal that when you wake up one day and you decide you can do something different, nobody tells you you can't. You know, everybody is doing their best to pass the torch to you so that they, you can light your own way, right. so that you can try on everything you think you might want to do until you find out what you want to do. But it's like after, you know, 25, after 28, they start looking at you like you're failing if you still have that mentality that you can wake up and change who you are, what you want to do. I hope that the people who are listening can figure out that they do have the ability to change their trajectory. Mm -hmm. That even in their deepest of griefs or struggles, that they can decide they're done with it that they can heal, that they can look at it through the lens of happiness and not have guilt. More importantly, I hope that people will wake up and realize that one of the changes they can make is about not listening to how society is telling them to behave or to shape. Not that I want, he throws his arm, not that I want a bunch of rebels out there, people tearing up shit and disrespecting people. I want people to be authentic. And if you've never had permission from someone, you know, I don't know who I am to you, just a voice right now, but I hope that you take my permission and become authentic and find out who you are, even if you're someone who wants to stay fixed. You want to find something and you want to stay put for 50 years. And even if you're someone who is like the wind, who wants to change directions, velocity, pressure, and be fluid in their life for the next 50 years, so be it. And when somebody else is throwing shade at you, I don't think I've ever said that out loud, but it's first time for everything. When somebody else is throwing shade at you, when someone else is hurt or angry, it's not about you. Whatever comes through somebody else is an amplification of whom they or of whom they are. Yes. Yes. And he says, let's make bumper stickers. I believe let's do that. 2019, whatever comes out of your mouth and your ass is, ampl is, is an amplification of who you are. Right, right. Touché, right? 
So true. <laughs> That's true. You are what you eat, too. Yeah. <laughs> Um, he says yeah. we forget that and we think that if somebody is saying something out loud that they obviously have a right to do it right right but somehow we think that they know something and they're better than us and then we have to defend them and then we get into confrontation and all that's just really right it's bullshit and needs to be beneath us yeah it was interesting that you bring it up like that much more eloquent than i put it to dylan on his way out the door to mammoth last night with a bunch of a group of guys, I said, uh, I love you, be kind. And um, most of all, remember when people say off things, it usually has more to do with what's going on with them than you. So try to let it go. Yeah. You and Griffin. Yeah. Within 24 hours, same page. You guys are on yeah. the same page. But I told Dylan, because when you're going to be with a group of people, there's always going to be an off comment, you know, and you can let it ruin you or you can. Gion, down the hill. Yeah. Griffin's like, I don't understand why people feel like they have to stop and acknowledge it. As soon as you acknowledge something, you're just giving it, you know, Power. freaking, yeah, kerosene, man. Makes the fire bigger. Yeah. Your words I, have power. You give them away. Right. I always feel this too, Griffin, in your life too. I always told you because <laughs> Griffin would always be the retaliator, so he'd get in trouble. So you'd find out why he was beating a guy up at school. I know he was beating a kid up at school because he said, say you're sorry, say you're sorry to the kid in elementary school because the kid said his dad wasn't a good football player, that Eric Griffin's dad wasn't a good football player. So you find out why he's beating people up and it makes sense, but who got in trouble? Griff, you know what I'm saying? Right, and he had a reason like on the way through, um, he played against Wayne Gretzky's kids team in baseball and on the way through the line when they shake hands he was just little baseball um, the, somebody called their coach fat griffin's coach fat and he said fuck off or <laughs> griffin did but griffin didn't explain to us the adults it just looked like griffin was flipping everybody off but i i was old enough to know that usually when you flip somebody off there's a reason you don't just walk around flipping people off it's a retaliation and um, so Griff had to come dress for the game. The next game, he got suspended, but he wouldn't tell why because he didn't want to hurt, hurt the coach's feelings. He wouldn't say why he flipped off. He did it to protect his coach because they were calling his coach a fat ass. Your coach is fat or something like that. <laughs> yeah. So he was right. His heart was in the right place. But I was just trying to explain to Griff that unfortunately the retaliator always gets caught and always gets in trouble and they don't want to hear the other side mm -hmm. so when somebody says something just let them sit in it just sit in it he agrees with that because yeah. if you deliver words and they're not you know received they're right. going to fall around you they're going to build around you and then people are going to feel it right. because it's going to disturb your energetic field Yes. And he totally remembers that. And it was a little bit more than a fat ass. Okay. He was also called a loser. Right. Also something else, you right. know, that he couldn't, you know, it wasn't a good coach. And his right. dad always taught me that you honor your coach. You trust right. your coach. I mean, I had mad respect for Griff. I was like, dang, his reason is so right. But you can't get through life like that. Like, unfortunately. No, it sucks. Life is yeah. actually not a game. We need to take care of each other. Yeah. So hello, 2019. Let's start taking right. care of each other. Exactly. He says, this shit's about to get real. I know, right? I know. 